Hello again, friends. This is Patrick. A while ago, I was talking about noise to my friend, and that's a shout out to you, Kodo. And we were wondering whether we could make noise that repeats seamlessly, like in a loop, right? So can it be done? So after a while, this is what I come up with. So not the best looking noise, but you can see that it's repeating and you can't really tell where the seams are. You can see a bit of a double image on uh, there's some crossfading here and there but I think otherwise we would say that it's it's repeating and it's looping, right? I'm gonna show my work process on this uh, from frame 1 to so frame 40. When we do loops, I usually um, do on the 1 uh, and on the twin uh, on, on 40 and then I'll just cut back on one frame so you don't get the same frame repeating so actually uh, frame 40 is exactly the same frame as frame 1 so you want all the settings uh, at that cut point where you loop back to be exactly the same and just to show you how simple it is all we need is a polyplane and um, and my setup for um, in the in my noise it's we're just using a noise and the setup uh, is just a shader uh, blend colors or a layered shader and then two noise how simple is that this technique can be accomplished uh, in any 3d applications 2d or otherwise as long as you have the a node uh, the functionality that can blend between two colors and then uh, a noise function you should be set to go so uh, let's do it from the start so I've deleted the setup uh, leaving only this surface shader for all intents and purposes you can just use a Lambert a Blin a Fong uh, anything at all so um, because I'm just dealing with just one set of colors uh, and no shading I'll just use a surface shader so the first thing that we want to put down is actually the blend uh, I think in 3D Studio Max you have blend or mix or something to that effect. So in Maya it's called blend colors. Uh, I'm gonna connect the output to the main color and um, now it's giving me a pink uh, because it's blending between uh, color 1 and color 2. So blending of value 0 gives the color two for some reason and blending of one gives color one so um, if I implemented it I would have done it the other way but Autodesk seems to have uh, followed this convention we want to just see a hundred percent of just one color okay let uh, color one for now maybe for color one let's plug in the noise pattern so just click and um, I'll just go with uh, a noise and then uh, we can see from our viewport the noise pattern that is the result so if you are not seeing this probably you're on number five and number four on the keyboard number five is shaded and number six uh, is the texture that's displayed uh, of course if you created the shader from scratch you would want to uh, apply that shader onto the geometry which uh, in Maya you can just middle mouse drag or you can uh, select the geometry and assign to the selection uh, right now we need the noise to animate right so now the noise is static uh, because I'm selecting the noise texture I'm, I'm seeing this uh, so from I can set a keyframe time uh, at frame 1 maybe time is 0 and at frame 40 uh, so I can't reach 40 so I can just click here and type 40 and I can set it to 1 okay and then uh, because my auto key is turned on um, so it set a key for me if you don't have auto key turned on you can just click a set key anyway right so um, I can just play this uh, so the first thing uh, for in Maya is that Maya interpolates your curve in a smooth kind of graph which is not what we want because we want it to be at constant speed and not uh, ease in and out so what we want to do now is just put it to linear and just play it 
So it's constant speed, and then we see that pop. Okay, so it's it has a pop because uh, time one looks nothing like time zero. So what we actually want to do is actually to at frame forty have that time zero again, right? So let's say time zero. Then there's the other way that we can do it is uh, make time progress from zero to one at the halfway point and then back to zero again. Let's see how that looks like. So uh, again, the curve interpolation, we want to make it linear and play. So another way that we can solve this problem besides going like ping pong uh, direction forward and direction back is that we can at 20 let's say this is 0.5 right so I'll, I'll set it at 0.5 for easy visualization and then in the next frame I set it at negative 5 you'll see in a second what I mean negative 0.5 okay at the point where it merges back to frame zero right it loops back we want it to be zero so uh, I can also enter the value here and hit zero and then uh, it's always going in a linear fashion so I'm gonna hit linear so let's take a look at what this does for us can you see now that at the looping point when it goes from to the end and looping back it's not jumping anymore right and then the jump happens now at 20 that's because uh, of us going back to the negative 5 and approaching 0 and then from 0 to positive 5 so in a sense we shifted that jump point right and we've achieved a seamless loop here at the at that break Point. So now that's where our second noise comes in. So we want to blend seamlessly a second noise at this critical part. We want to fade that noise in, okay, to cover this the fact that there's a jump. Okay, so uh, to cover it, and then when it reaches back to the joining point where there's a seamless, we want to fade that second noise out. So there you have it. It is the crucial idea behind this whole setup. So now let's proceed. Let's say I'm very, very happy with this noise. I'm going to duplicate this noise for efficiency sake, because we're not going to do any different values for how the texture is placed and repeated and the size on the geometry. I'm going to do this special uh, duplicate with connection to the network. So. Uh, we want to duplicate this noise because we want the noise to look exactly the same bec uh, because we're we're doing a blend uh, and we want it to be seamless right exactly the same uh, and for this second one so that we don't mistake it for uh, and confuse ourselves I'm going to put the color offset to a red so to see that uh, you notice that there's this S uh, toggle on each of the node so if I toggle this I'm just seeing the output of this node so if I hit this I'm seeing noise 1 and I, when I click this I'm seeing noise 2 so uh, let's put it here and right now uh, the blender is showing 1 so let's put it to 0 and this is solid blue and I'm going to connect this color to color 2 and suddenly we're seeing this new noise okay so as per what we've discussed previously, we want that break and jump at frame 21 uh, to, f to have this second noise fade in and be at 100% to totally take over and mask uh, and hide that jump and then go back in opacity back to here. Okay, so um, let's do that. So at frame one, this noise, uh, this blender, we want it to show 100% of that black and white uh, noise. So right click and set a key and at frame 21, 
we want it now to show the other one so at zero now the other one is showing up uh, 100 percent and we don't see the black and white anymore then um, back in frame 40 we want that blend node to go back to that black and white one so that's my color one okay so let's see what that uh, curve animation curve looks like and let's see how it looks like in our viewport so let's play okay you see that jump again that's because these two nodes had connection to the same animation curve so if I see my noise 2 I can see the time is being animated as well so I'm gonna break it set time to 0 so let's play that again so you see now that we broken up we broken the animation and this red part is now no longer animated so just now we saw the jump because it was still connected to the animation curve uh, now that it is standalone and not animating anymore uh, this is what it looks like so right it looks like it's being frozen which it is and then we pass the opacity back to the looping part that gives us the seamless loop so now the last thing that remains is for us to just have this animating as well so um, we want the animation of this second one to be exactly the same speed as the first one so, uh, this first noise so let's take a look at the first noise um, it is the speed would be from the first frame to the 20th frame to have a 0 0.5 uh, value right so it's like so it's uh, 0 0.5 per 20 frames so let's set a key for this guy uh, 0 at frame 0 uh, time is 0 set a key at 20 is 0.5 therefore at 40 at frame 40 is 1.0 right 1.0 so um, and again in the curve editor we see that it's uh, easing in and out with a smooth which is what we don't want so let's straighten it out again and um, let's now see what happens so now we have these two noises fading in and out on each other right so just to make it a bit more pleasing and uh, less jarring that jump we want to uh, put that color offset back to zero so now it's two gray noises and now the thing that's sort of obvious is that uh, you have that very black very dark blacks right and then during that blend you don't see the dark blacks so uh, this is now just technicality where um, I'm going back to here and that's the first noise I'm gonna raise the the threshold so the the black parts are no, not absolutely black right okay and then I'm going to the jump point where it shows the other noise I'm going to search for that one and raise the blacks okay you realize that when you raise the black the, the white parts are so white out so you want to you want to lower the the amplitude so that uh, there's only a few points where it's absolute white so again back to my previous the noise one and going back to here uh, you see that lots of areas of P 
pure white which is no detail so I'm gonna do that same thing by lowering the amplitude and then just saving a few extreme spots for white uh, that's the same principle for rendering and in CG uh, in general that we don't want anything uh, crushed on in, on the blacks and the white so let's now play again and you see it's much more um, pleasing and easy to hide uh, that transition okay so um, that's my tutorial for seamless noise uh, if you have more ideas I'm sure there are a lot of other more elegant ways to do this uh, and this method is applicable to like I said any applications that support kind of mixing between two incoming layers uh, you can make your own seamless animated noise this is good for smoke it's good for water it's good for some kind of traveling bump maps I hope you enjoy it and uh, I'll see you next time